What's up guys, I'm Maths here and today we're looking at percentages. Now we're mainly going to be focused on repeated percentage change, that's like compound interest or compound depreciation, whatever. Um, but percentages are like they come up on the exam so much that it's difficult to cover all the types of questions in just a short video. Um, so just check out our website for all the different types of questions you might get with this. However, um, compound interest and repeated percentage change is by far the the most important really to understand uh, because from it you can understand how to work with percentages in other ways. So first question up is from AQA and it's given us the value of a new car and it says in the first year it's gone up or oh, sorry it's gone down because it says decreases because obviously the value of a car decreases by 25%. So we're just going to focus on that. So it's gone 25% down. Now, what's really important to understand is how to work with multipliers. And multipliers, when you understand them, are dead simple. All you do is you start off with 100%, and it's always 100%. You take away 25%, okay, because it's decreasing by 25%, and work out what percentage you end up with, right? The next thing you want to do is make that 75% into a decimal. And you do that just by dividing by 100. Simple as that. And that's our multiplier, 0.75. How simple. Okay, for the next four years, it, it decreases by 12%. So we're just going to do one of those years. So 12% decrease. So we start off with 100%. And we've gone down by 12%. So therefore, we're at 88%. And we want to make that a multiplier. So we just divide it by 100. And that's 0.88. So that's our multiplier. Okay, and, and to answer this question, it is really, really simple. You get the amount, which is 18,000, times it by the first multiplier, and then times it by the second multiplier for every single year that it, it's uh, applied. So it says it's four years. Okay, now what I could do is write times 0 0.88, times 0 0.88, like four times, or we just do it to the power of four. Either way, you get exactly the same answer. So I'm going to get my calculator out. So 18,000 times 0.75 times 0.88 to the power of 4, because we're timesing it by it four times. And the answer I get is 8095 point, and it says 887, so it's going to be 89, um, because we're rounding to the nearest penny. Now, I'm sure you could have rounded to the nearest pound, and I'm sure you could have rounded it uh, even more than that. Just always make sure you write down um, somewhere what you've rounded it to, unless it's to the nearest penny, because nearest penny is pretty obvious. Um, so just a few gotchas in this. Um, I see this a lot, that they say, OK, 0.88 is the multiplier for one year, so we're going to times that by four. That is completely wrong. Okay, um, you never ever time something by four with compound interest in that way. It's always to the power of, because you're timesing it by 0.88 four times. Um, so it's always to the power of. Um, if we were to do compound interest, if we were to increase it, um, all, the only thing that changes here is, is this bit here. Um, so instead of a minus, that would be a plus. Okay, next up, Ed Excel's question. This kind of steps it up a bit because instead of giving us um, how much um, or how many years um, there is, they've given us the formula um, and they haven't really told us the percentage rate or anything else. Um, so if we look at the multiplier, we can actually work it out. Um, not that we need to. Um, so we could times that by 100 to make it a percentage and therefore, obviously, compared to 100%, that's 15% less. So it's going down by 15%. Um, so that's useful to know. However, I don't think we need that for the question because the question is saying, um, when's Jack's boat going to be less than 50% of the value of the boat? So what we can start off with with this is work out what 50% would be. So we can divide that by 2, which is 6,250. So we're looking for it to be £6,250, so as soon as it goes below that. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to um, type in, we don't really, and we should really write this down, but anyway, um, type in 12,500 on your calculator. Then what you're going to do is just press equals. Okay, then if you type in times 0.85, 
what should come up if you've got a modern calculator is answer times 0.85 okay now every time you press equals will represent a year so if we have like one year is it a year or is it week um oh yeah okay so one year so equals and then you just press equals in your calculator and it will tell you so that if you press it again it will then reduce it by 15 percent again so press it equals again and you might need to press s to d button on the casio calculator because it will write it as a fraction press it again and we're getting close with this I'm just going to put some dots there. Press it again. Okay, so we're really close. And then when you press it again, we get 5546.316, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now um, all we do now is just work out how many years that is. Well, that's five years. And you can double check this if you get your calculator and you type in times 0 0.85 to the power of 5 and we should get the same number so times 0 0.85 to the power of 5 and we get exactly the same number 5546 so we just keep going until we get a number less than that which is less than 50 percent um, now the astute among you might realize that actually we didn't really need to know this number in fact we could have done it without knowing this number if we'd used 100, so instead of typing in uh, 12,500 in the calculator, we just type in 100 and just wait until we get to 50, so any number that's less than 50, it would absolutely give you the same answer. It would still be 5. So the actual amount does not matter for this, which is interesting because there have been questions before where it says it's reduced by 15%. That's all it gives you how many years until it halves its value. And that's how you do it. You just put a number 100 in. In fact, with the multiplier, you could wait until the multiplier gets below 0 0.5. That's a different way of doing it. So, yeah, loads of different ways of doing that. Right, onwards with the next question. Um, it says here, a savings account pays interest. So now we're not given the rate of interest. Um, Jack invests that amount. At the end of the year, Jack pays tax on the interest of that. After paying tax, he gets that. Wow. So this question is, is um, well, we're going to start with this off by looking at the reverse percentages. So he's got um, £79.20 at the end, at the end of paying um, the interest rate. Okay. And I'm just going to change the colour so we can have that kind of a bluey colour. Right. So we've got to work out what the interest rate is as a multiplier. And so it's the same as we've done before. So start off with 100%. The interest rate means it goes down by 40%, which would be 60%. And then we need to make that multiplier. So we just divide that by 100. So that's 0 0.6. Now, the reason this is called reverse percentages is we're going backwards. We've got the answer and we're looking for the question. So with a multiplier, we normally multiply. But when you're working backwards, we end up doing a divide. Now this is a bit misleading because actually it's the wrong way it's because on the calculator we would type in 79.2 divided by 0 0.6 but I'm just kind of showing that it's going the wrong way so we're dividing it. Okay so calculator out 79.2 divided by 0 0.6 means that he had £132 before he was taxed. So we could call this pre-tax. Okay, so we want to work out the percentage change, okay, which is basically the interest rate on that one year. So to work out the percentage change, all we need to do is remember the formula. So the formula is so percentage, and it will be an increase because it's interest, is change over original times 100 percent okay so the change how much has it changed which well, changed by 132 so we've just worked that out what was it originally well it was 5500 times by 100 percent 
Okay, so calculator out. 132 divided by 5500 equals times 100. And it says 2.4. So the answer would be 2.4. Now you could put a percent there, but it's asking you to work out the value of R. And this, this is really nuanced, but it's asking you to work out the value of R. And R actually has the percent next to it. So like, I don't think you lose a mark if you put a percent there. But for this question, it's not a requirement that you have to put a percent there because the percent is already kind of next to R. All right, last up's OCR with a really, really tricky question. Uh, I can understand why people would struggle on this one. Um, so we've got the amount invested, we've got the amount of years, and we've got the final amount, but we're missing that, that thing that we've been using to work out the multiplier. Um, so th this is not going to be easy. So what I'd normally do with this type of question is just draw a little diagram of what we know. So we know it was that at the start, and we know at the end it's that. Now we actually do know some other things. We know that we are going to multiply or multiply it by a multiplier, which I'm going to call, I don't know, x. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply it by that multiplier again. Now, as I said to you in a previous video, or in a previous question, um, x times x times x just becomes times x squared. It means the same thing. And that will equal that. Okay. And now it's starting to look achievable because this is exactly like algebra. And algebra makes things nice and simple. Let's pick a nice color that I haven't used. Uh, one that will show up. Let's do purple. So we'll get our lines in as we normally do. Okay. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to divide, if I click the right thing, divide by 1200, just like I would to solve anything. So we've got x squared equals, and we've got 1379.02 divided by 1200. I'm just not going to actually work that out just yet. Um, in fact, I've used the wrong color for that. Got to keep consistent with my colors. Okay, I'm not going to work that out because um, I know that the next bit would be to square root both sides to get x on its own, right? And then I can just work it all out at the end. So we're going to square root the thirteen seventy nine point zero two over one thousand two hundred, and let's just do this all in blue right so get calculator out square root 1379.02 over 1200 and i get 1.071999689 do i need to write that all out probably not but let's just do it anyway okay so now we've got a problem here because we've we've got the multiplier but we haven't um, actually got the value of r because r is a percentage. So you might remember the steps before um, that we used. We got the 100%. We added, because this is interest, so it would be add. We added the percentage, which is r. And then we got the um, value here, whatever that is. Then we got that value and we divide it by 100 to get the um, multiplier, which we know, which is this one, long value here. Okay, so we're just going to go backwards. We're just going to do the complete opposite steps. So we're going to start off with the 1.071, blah, 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 and we're going to times it by 100. Okay, so I'm just going to get my calculator out, times by 100. Okay, and that will give me 107.199, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we've done that second step. Now we need to do the first step. So all we need to do now is take away 100 from it. So 107.199, blah, 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 take away 100. We're just doing the inverse operations. Okay, so take away 100. And that gives 7.199968. It's probably more after that. 
Okay, so does it say we need to round it? No, it doesn't. Okay, so we'll probably get away with choosing what to round it to. So I probably would round that to 7.20 um, to two decimal places or something, or three significant figures, same thing. Okay, now you might say, well, do we need that zero there? Well, yeah, if I've picked two decimal places, I need to show that I've used two decimal places. Um, if I picked one decimal place, I wouldn't need it there. I'd just write 2.7, uh, sorry, 7.2. Um, but not the easiest question in the world, but not impossible. As long as you understand what multipliers are and understand how to use algebra, not a very difficult question. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. If you want to see more from us, release videos every single weekday, Monday to Friday. Click subscribe, click the bell icon to make sure you're up to date with all the videos we release. Uh, if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have, check out our website on maps.com. There'll be a card that magically appears above me now, or above this video now. Um, on the our website, is, everything's completely free. There's loads and loads of resources, loads of stuff to try out, loads and loads of topics and predicted papers and all sorts of things. So go to onmasters.com, check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.